morning, everybody. It is good to be here in this place with you this morning as we enter into a time of worship together. If you are joining us online, we welcome you as well. As we are gathered together by the Holy Spirit as one body of Christ in this place and in this time. Would you join me in prayer this morning as we enter into worship together? Gracious God, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for this beautiful morning that greeted us as we awoke. We thank you for your presence that draws us together and reminds us of your presence and your love with us. Lord, may we give you praise today. May we hear your voice that speaks to us. And may we be uplifted and encouraged and empowered today to live who we are called to be in your name. And we ask all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening scripture this morning comes from Psalm 150. And this is a song, a psalm of praise that teaches us to give praise to God for his works in our lives. It says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let us join now in praising God by beginning in singing 10,000 Reasons.
our time of prayer this morning. Uh, Breakthrough Miracle Power is a song uh, that leads us to recognize God's power in our prayers, comes through in our prayers, and God is there to help us to deal with the obstacles, to break through the, the issues of life that uh, seem to be so prevalent right now.
powers of this world. And that's why we pray. That's why we ask God help in dealing with things. Whether they be spiritual or physical, God's power is at work within us. God's power works through us. And the victory, Scripture says, is ours. How can we be praying this morning? Any prayer requests that you want to share? Let us go to our Lord in prayer this morning as we lift up the needs of our heart that are in our prayer lists and of our community as well. Gracious God, we come this morning knowing that your presence is with us. We come this morning knowing that it is through you and in you that we are, we are loved and we are empowered and we have peace. Gracious God, we, we lift before you the needs of our hearts. For those, Lord, who need healing, who are struggling with illnesses, across the whole spectrum of, of illnesses, Lord, COVID, cancer, chronic illnesses, pain, Lord, we know that you are the ultimate healer. That all, that all the healing comes from you. But we also give thanks for the doctors and nurses whom you have gifted to bring healing and to help us in those times. Lord, we pray for Connie's brother facing surgery tomorrow. We pray, Lord, for your hand to be with the doctors, to bring comfort to, to Jim and to his family as well. Lord, for those who are facing chronic issues, we pray for their healing. We pray, Lord, for those who are dealing with anxiety and worry. We pray for your peace to flood into their lives. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving, and we lift before you Rock Holbrook's family. We thank you that they were able to get together to celebrate his life. And Lord, we it, here remember his life as well, and his faith that was expressed through this congregation. Lord, we pray for our community. Pray for our uh, unity. Lord, we ask that you be with the churches here in Dallas, that they be places of light and of peace in the midst of the struggles and the, the divisions that we have. We pray, Lord, for our country, for our state, as we look to what is going on in our world today. Lord, we lift before you Ukraine. We pray, Lord, for its citizens, for its leadership. We pray, Lord, for the leadership of Russia, Lord, for, for softening of hearts. Lord, we pray ultimately for peace. And it's a peace, Lord, that only you can bring. And we give you thanks, Lord, for the blessings of of life, for successful surgeries and procedures. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bring healing, continue to bring new life this spring. 
We ask all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture this morning is a continuation from last week. Last week being Easter, where we heard the story of Mary meeting Jesus at the tomb. With a simple word, Mary's life was changed. She went from grieving, from looking for Jesus' body, to recognizing Jesus right in front of her. But the resurrection story doesn't end there. This morning we're going to hear two stories of Jesus' appearance to his disciples. You're probably familiar with them. But I want you to hear them and try to enter into the story. Put yourself in the place of, of the disciples. They were afraid. They still didn't understand what was going on. They were in a locked room because they were afraid of the Jews. They were in this locked room because they didn't want any surprises. They wanted to protect themselves. They were grieving. They'd been traumatized. And this is where Jesus meets them. So here are these words from John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he turned and said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. As I said, the disciples were in that room, in, in a house, for fear of the Jews. They were living in fear. They had been traumatized because what they had seen just a few days earlier, they had heard the report from Mary they heard John and Peter talk about the empty tomb. But everybody who was there, except for maybe Mary, was wondering what was going on. What was happening? They were still trying to process everything that had been happening. As we heard last week, Peter and John still did not realize that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Can you imagine the conversations in that room? Can you imagine what they were talking about? Whether it was with the whole group or side conversations. Wondering what was going on. Recounting where they were, what they had seen during Jesus' arrest and trial and crucifixion. They may have been talking about Barry's report or Peter and John's report that yeah, the tomb is empty, and we don't know what's going on. And though, then though the doors were locked, 
suddenly Jesus was in their midst. And the first thing he says to them, peace be with you. How many times have you or have we longed to hear Jesus just simply tell us, peace be with you? So often we long for the peace that Christ offers us. For Christ to be with us, for Christ's presence to be in our midst, and to simply hear those words, peace be with you. There are so often, so many times, so many things that are going on in our lives, both outside of us, and within our own hearts and minds, that we do not feel at peace, that we are struggling with things, that we want to know God's peace with us. And we look, we look around, wonder where Jesus is in the midst of this. Well, this story, these two stories about Jesus' appearance to the disciples tell us that in the midst of our chaos, doubt, fears, anxiety, worries, questioning, Jesus does meet us there. Jesus calls our name and says to us, peace, be with you. Sometimes we don't have, we don't hear it very well because the things of this world, the things of this life are overwhelming us. And yes, it would be nice if Jesus were to suddenly physically appear with us and say, peace be with you. But Jesus calls to us, calls us by name, our spirits and through the Holy Spirit and says to us, peace be with you. He meets us in the midst of our trauma, of our grief, of our struggles and says, peace be with you. And to me, that's comforting. But Jesus doesn't just comfort us in the midst of those times. He doesn't just say, peace be with you, stay where you're at. Jesus empowers us, just like he did with the disciples, just like he said to the disciples and, and did with the disciples in that first meeting. He empowers us to move forward. In a few weeks, we'll be celebrating Pentecost. But in this story, Jesus breathes on his disciples, on those who are gathered in that room. We don't know exactly who all was there, but we know it was the disciples. breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. I can imagine the disciples going, what are you talking about? What do you mean by that? You see, Jesus came, and through the three years of his ministry, he shared the kingdom of God with those who would listen. He met with those who were outcasts. He met with those who were on the fringes of society, who the, the religious leaders, the national leaders, the state leaders, the communities had cast out. Those people who, who, were, who were labeled unclean or unworthy, Jesus met with them. He preached to them. He talked to them. He, he built relationships with them. He preached the good news of the kingdom of heaven. And this is Jesus telling the disciples, as I've been sent to do these things, so I am sending you out further to do these things. And you've been empowered this day to do that. You've been given the Holy Spirit. You've been given the Holy Spirit to empower you to move 
forward. I wonder if if at that time the disciples really remembered what Jesus had said about the Holy Spirit. It wasn't too many chapters ago, if you will, in John, that Jesus had talked about the Holy Spirit, that he was going to be going away, but that he wouldn't leave them alone. He was going to send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, one who would remind them of what Jesus said, one who would empower them to do the things that they were called to do. The good news is, they did those things. They went out and did those things, and you and I are a direct result of that. And even the better news, you and I not only hear the words, peace be with you, but you and I have been given the Holy Spirit as well. We have been empowered to not just be comforted, but we have been empowered to move forward, to be sent out, to do the things that God has called us to do. And we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to worry about how we're going to do those things. Because we've been empowered. We've been gifted the Holy Spirit. We don't have to worry about it anymore. So Jesus brings the disciples comfort. He brings them empowerment. And he gives them a new life. And that new life really begins with Jesus' new life, his resurrection. That first night, the disciples recognized Jesus with them. But Thomas wasn't with them. And that week later, When when Jesus appeared again to the disciples and Thomas was with them, he gave Thomas the opportunity to put his fingers in the holes in his his hand, put his hand in Jesus' side, just like Thomas wanted, that proof. But it doesn't say that Thomas actually took Jesus up on that. Just Jesus' appearance to Thomas, to the disciples. Hearing those words... Again, peace be with you. Thomas's response was, my Lord and my God. I think Thomas often gets a bad rap. What do we call him, Doubting Thomas? Let's rename him. We decided Thursday morning at Bible study we were going to rename Thomas. Instead of Doubting Thomas, we're going to call him believing Thomas because that's ultimately who he was who he is his doubts could have kept him away from the disciples he could have kept them away from Jesus but it didn't it actually drew him closer to the disciples it drew him closer to Jesus and at Jesus' appearing he said I believe and Thomas was included in that sending out. Tradition tells us that that Thomas, I believe, went to India and took the gospel message there. Thomas is not doubting. Thomas is a believing man. And he took that belief and did the things he he needed to do with it. He was empowered just as the other disciples were. He was lifted up just as the disciples were. He was given peace as well. Jesus meets us where we're at. Jesus meets us in the midst of our struggles, our trauma, our grief, our disbelief, our questions, our doubts. Jesus meets us where we're at. It doesn't matter where that place is. It doesn't matter where you are this morning. Jesus is here to meet us in that place. Jesus speaks our name. Listen. And he says, Derek, peace be with you. 
share it, you are empowered. You are empowered to go out and do what I've called you to do. You are empowered to live a new life, to be a new creation. That's the same thing he tells each one of us. Each one of us here today. Each one of us that listens or hears these words. We are empowered because we have that Holy Spirit. We have been given peace beyond understanding because of God's presence with us. And we are called to go out into the world. And not only share the good news, but be the good news. To love those around us, to take care of the needs that we, that we can around us. To bring peace, God's peace, to places where it needs to happen. great saying I heard actually quite a while ago that I think really fits this, this text. It, be, it says, God's peace is just like water. It flows to the lowest points of our life and meets us there. You know how water flows to the lowest point of whatever container it's in or whatever cavern it's in? God's peace flows to those places in our life and meets us in those places, but doesn't leave us there. God's peace, the Holy Spirit, brings us out, empowers us to live a new life, a new life that is, is possible because of what God does and has done in our lives. This is the message of the resurrection, that you and I have new life in Christ that we have been given God's peace and empowered to live a new life. This is for us today. And I hope you hear it. I hope you've heard God call your name. I hope you've heard God say to you, peace be with you. I hope you know that you have the Holy Spirit that lives within you that encourages you, that empowers you. I hope you know that you are new creations, that we are new creations, called to live a different way because of what God has done through the resurrection of Jesus. Would you pray with me this morning? Gracious God, thank you for today. We thank you once again, Lord, for the resurrection of Jesus that, that does bring us new life that does give us new hope, that does empower us to live new lives today. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for all that you do for us. And most of all, for the gift of Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. our communion time this morning. The, the grand hymn, I Surrender All, is a hymn that reminds us that each day we are called to give back to God the things that, that may hold us down. We surrender our whole lives. We surrender everything we are to God. And God lifts us up. Let us see.
invite John up this morning to lead us in our time of communion together. say is how two months ago uh, during my Bible reading I came across a scripture and I thought you know that would be a good communion scripture and I like to uh, find those and then I put a thought to it and I, and, and I put it in my Bible and, and uh, that way when the parent asked me uh, would you like to do communion I would have that scripture well it just so happened that that scripture and that thought were the same uh, theme that we had with I would like to think that I'm amazed by that, but should I be amazed by that? Probably not, because if you're a Christian and you live your life for Christ, it should just be natural that things like that happen. So uh, the uh, communion scripture that I want to share with you is uh, one that you've already heard this morning, and it's John 20, 29. And it says, and before uh, I read it, I will tell you, how, how, how blessed all of you are here, here today. Uh, John 20, 29, um, it says, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have uh, believed. This morning, I want here today. You love the Lord, and, and, and uh, you're here uh, how to honor him, because he died on the cross for us. And let us continue this week to remember that, that we are blessed, and that he loves us so much. We pray with you. Our, our Father in heaven, we uh, thank you for uh, uh, for being here with us uh, today, and, and uh, we thank you as your believers as people in this love you, that you bless us in so many ways. And we just give you the praise in Christ's name. Amen. I'm going to read from Matthew 26, 26 this morning. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Communion is such a, an important part of our worship time. It's also an important part of, of a believer's life because we come and we remember Christ's sacrifice, but we also remember his new one. Thank you, John, very much. I'm going to call your attention to our, our time of offering, a time of giving back to God out of what God has given to us. We have a, a box in the back underneath the mirrors we leave uh, for you to give of your offerings, your tithes and offerings this morning like to give online and give uh, through our website, go to our website at dallasfirstcc.com, and there's a, a button, a link there to be able to do that, and just follow the instructions as it walks you through that process. As we give back to what, as, out of what God has given to us, we recognize God's provision, and we recognize God's uh, call to support the ministries and the things that the church does in the world today. 
We encourage you to do that uh, each Sunday as you are able to. Some announcements for this morning. The men's group continues to meet on, on Thursday mornings at 8.30 here at the church. We encourage, uh, if you can, men to, to join us as, as you can and are able. We always have good discussions and a good time together. The dental van will be here this coming Friday. Uh, I, mean, I think they get here about 8 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock, somewhere in there. And uh, so be praying for that. Uh, be, be praying for those ones who will be here uh, to have their teeth worked on. That's always uh, kind of a scary thing for, for some people, but it's a good outreach. And they do the Northwest Medical Team does a great job as they come and take care of people who are in pain, who are in need. And uh, thanks to Shell and Melda for their, their help, and their, their uh, volunteer to, to help with that ministry and that outreach. Uh, National Day of Prayer is coming up. Uh, we will be having a, a small, a simple gathering at the courthouse on Thursday, May 5th, which is a week from this Thursday at noon. It's a time of prayer together as the community, and we encourage you to come and be a part of that as you are able to. Uh, we'll just be meeting on, on the out in front of the courthouse there on, on the sidewalk. They say don't on the lawn quite yet. It's not quite ready for, for people to walk on. Uh, but we get to walk on the sidewalks and enjoy some of their new uh, landscape around us as we pray, not only for our community, but for one another and for our country as well. And then again, once again, uh, coming up uh, on Pentecost. We talked about Pentecost just briefly this morning, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit to the church. On Pentecost, we'll be gathering as the one church in Dallas at, at 11 o'clock at, sta- at the football stadium here in town. And so we'll be gathering as uh, the churches come together to celebrate uh, Pentecost, celebrate the, the ministry and the unity of the church here in all that we do. So we encourage you to, to look forward, and you'll be hearing even more about that in the coming weeks. But just uh, keep that in mind as you go about uh, this next week. Uh, we'll be doing the family visitor will be out next week. So if you have something you'd like to put in there, let us know. And we'll be sure to get that in there th- this week. Other announcements? I always got to check because I'm never sure if I forget anything up there. And we don't have any birthdays here in the sanctuary this week, but remember to, to share happy birthdays with those who, who are, are listed there as you are able to this week. So let us stand for our closing song this morning as we uh, prepare for our The song, Same Power, is a song that reminds us that the power that God, that Jesus breathed on his disciples and gave to them, the power that we receive at Pentecost with the, the Holy Spirit is the same power that we have today in all that we do.
being empowered to live, knowing that God is with you each day. May you go in peace and power. Amen.